Hello guys and welcome back to The Sim here in the UK. Today we're continuing with the 737 SS build, single seat, and we're going to build all the Cori enunciators to go in the unit. Now I was very lucky to be sent some real Corries from the 737. Here they are and this gave me a really good baseline to be able to draw up a good version in CAD. Now Here's my version. The face plates are identical in size. Mine are slightly shorter, but it does have press to test function. So it's also got the back shell here, which allows you to tighten the whole unit into the face panel. Simply with a nut at the end here. And there's our completed unit. Very simple build. It's got a dedicated PCB at the end. It's got two tactile LED switches in the middle. And then inside, this is the center portion. We've got the decal plate. And then we've got a diffuser lens on the inside. Now what this diffuser plate does is it helps spread the light of the two LEDs nice and evenly and Oh, it's not going to come out, never mind. It allows us to use constant white LEDs throughout the whole lot because we've got actual coloured lenses in the captions. Let's put the real enunciator to one side and show you how these are built. So first up, we're going to need some header pins. These are male header pins and Got two colours, we've got black which indicates the ground and the switch side of the corrie. Then I like to use the colour that the corrie is going to be. In this case we're going to use white LEDs, so I've got white header pins. All I need to do is cut two off. There we go, that's the white ones. And the same for the black. They're cut off, we can put those to one side. Now what I have done is I've got some female header pins. I've got a spare PCB and I've attached the, the female header pins on to the PCB. What this allows is because I create so many of these, this is like a nice little soldering jig that I can put in the vise here. There we go. And we can put our pins into the board. So before we can put the header pins into the board, we need to do something very important. We need to put the PCB down on a flat surface. We need to get our header pins with the long side in the snipe nose pliers. We need to put the pins into the PCB and then we need to push down on the plastic part and that will set the perfect depth of the pins. In goes the black ones, push down on the plastic, Whee! away she goes and now they're ready to be soldered into the unit. So now we can put those header pins with the long side legs going into the female header pins. There's the black ones. We can put this on top, that will hold it firmly in place and we can solder away. And here we go. So now we don't want to apply too much solder that we get a massive blob on top because we want these to be flush with the surface. And you can see there that the solder is pretty flush with the surface. And we've got our LED tactile switches. Remember that the longer leg is the anode. So we're going to put that anode next to the plus sign on the PCB. In it goes. Long leg first, the other LED, and we're just going to push that into place. And you can see that it has sat completely flush with the PCB now. We're going to grab another one and do exactly the same. Long leg in. Good click and now it's time to solder these. I can take the jig out of the vise, gently hold it by the switches and we can grab the soldering iron and then just apply solder to each of the legs. It's going to be 12 here to do and then there's just one last step to do with finishing the PCB off and that is to trim 
over legs. Now, if you trim them as flush as you can to the board, better the fit in the outer case. With our PCB complete, we've then got an M3 screw. Mine are 12 millimeters long. Now this screw length will vary depending on the panel thickness that the Corrie has to sit into. So if you've got a thicker panel than three millimeters, you're gonna need a longer screw. This is really simple. We're just gonna place that M3 screw into the top of the PCB between the two switches. There we go. We're gonna grab the center case which is the big inner part. We've got our PCB with the screw in here and we're just going to feed the two together at 45 degrees and then push hard. There we go, it's clicked in. And that stops the caption from coming back out. We're going to grab our outer case. Now that's the bigger outer section. We've got our switch assembly and we're just going to feed the two together. Give them a gentle push. You can see everything has come out through the base. There's actually a big hole. Well, you can't see it on camera because it's too dark. But I've designed a big hole in the center case so you can put a screwdriver into the unit and now we can hold that screw. We've got a three millimeter nut and that's just gonna screw on the end and hold the whole unit together. He says, oh, there we go. And I'm going to use my 5.5 mil socket and gently just tighten that screw and nut up. So now it's a fixed unit, but it does have press capability. Now it's time to fit the diffuser lens. Now, like most of my projects, these diffuser lenses are angled or slanted one way. So there's a smaller forward face and a thicker outer face. You need to find the smaller face to insert it into the orifice. And of course, the more you push it in, the tighter it's gonna get. And we're gonna push that all the way to the bottom. That's gonna give us a nice, even glow of light. I've got our amber enunciator lens here. I am just gonna take off the protective backing now. With the protective backing off, we can place that into the unit. Now I've started it, and because again, this has got tapered sides, it's much better if you take the unit, place it on a flat surface, and then push the lens into the assembly. And there is our first Corrie fully finished. Now I say fully finished, it just needs the back shell to go on, but we need to bring in the MIP for that. Let's do that now. So I've got my first caption. I'm just gonna gently push it into position. I'll keep my finger on the front. Then I've got the cage assembly here. That's gonna go over the top. I've got a tiny M3 nut, that's gonna go on the back. Give that a little tweak. It's fitted securely from the front. So we could test it now by putting our ground on the outer pin and our plus five volts on the other outer pin. Yep, there it is, it's all lit up. Hopefully you can see it from the front. So that's as if you were getting the five volts from the Arduino. Now don't forget you must use resistors. I'm using a power supply here set to the correct voltage and a maximum current output of 40 milliamps because there's two LEDs in parallel. Now, if I move the five volt line onto the same side as the ground pin, this is the five volts for the south test. We can see that the caption isn't lit, but now if I push it, it lights up on push to test. There we go. That's the first one done, let me get the rest in. So I've got my power supply leads. I'm just gonna go through now and make sure that every single one lights up before we move on to the next stage. And there we have it guys all the Cori 318 annunciators fitted. I think they look pretty cool. This unit is really starting to come together and it's completely on a, an absolute different level compared to my dual seat back in Brunei. This is how I should have built it the first time round. 
Until the next episode, guys, sim out.